this quadcopter has Betaflight 4.0 on it, and I want it to have Betaflight 4.1 on it because Betaflight 4.1 flies, it's just, it's really good. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna flash this quadcopter from Betaflight 4.0 to 4.1, and if you've never done this before and you're worried about losing your configuration or flashing the wrong firmware and breaking your flight controller, this video is for you. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The first thing you're going to need to do in order to update to Betaflight 4.0 is have Betaflight and the STM32 virtual COM port driver installed on your computer. If you have ever used Betaflight before, you're probably good to go. But if this is your very first time, pause at this video. Down in the video description, there is another video that walks you through installing Betaflight. If I put all this stuff in one video, it'd be 10 hours long and you'd never, you wouldn't watch any of it. So get Betaflight installed, get the STM32 virtual COM port driver installed, and then we're gonna plug this quadcopter in. Once the quadcopter is plugged in and if the drivers are working correctly, we will see a new COM port appear up here. If you have a Mac or Linux machine, it won't say COM3, it'll say something else, but you'll see a new device appear here. And if you're not sure about that, just unplug USB and it'll disappear. See, where, where did COM3 go? That's the one that this quadcopter is using. If you plug in USB and you don't see a new COM port appear, then either your drivers are messed up or your USB cable is messed up or maybe your flight controller is messed up. Fingers crossed. Hope that's not it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select that one and I'm going to hit connect. And before we update our configuration, the very first thing we need to do is we need to save out our configuration. When you update to a new Betaflight version, it usually wipes your config. It just erases it. And that has caught up many people who just were like, oh, I'm just gonna update some firmware and then suddenly their quadcopter doesn't work. And as a beginner, that can be really stressful. Here's what you need to do. Go to the CLI tab and type diff all. And when you do that, it'll dump out a bunch of text and don't worry about what all that text means for now. What you need to do is then click save to file. I'm gonna give this file a name. Like this is a iFlight Nazgul and it is Betaflight 4.0 config, okay? So I'm gonna give it a name and I'm gonna hit save. Then I need to get the quadcopter into bootloader mode. The bootloader mode is what allows us to flash new firmware to the quadcopter. Now there is a bootloader button on your flight controller and if you hold down that bootloader button while plugging in USB, your quadcopter will go into your flight controller, it will go into bootloader mode. That is actually kind of annoying and there's an easier way to do it through software. You can do it through software if you're here in the command line by typing BL and hitting enter. And when you do that, you should see here in the, oh good, I'm glad it didn't work because it gives me a chance to show you how to fix it. You should see here in the ports tab, the letters DFU. That means your quadcopter is in bootloader mode. If you don't see that, Here's the fix. You need to go to this web page and download the Impulse RC Driver Fixer app, and this will fix your drivers. Good news, folks who use Mac OS and Linux, this only applies to Windows users. This problem only happens with Windows drivers. It just never happens. You should just always see DFU on Mac OS and Linux. So since I'm having that problem, I'm going to download this app, and in fact, since this is such a common problem, I've actually downloaded it permanently and it's right here on my taskbar. I'm going to run that app and it will find the flight controller, install the DFU driver and fix my drivers. Success, drivers fixed. Now I still don't see DFU up here. So I'm gonna unplug USB. I need to power cycle the flight controller. I plug it back in and now it is no longer in bootloader mode. So I'll show you the other way to get to bootloader mode. I showed you the command line, you type BL. Here in uh, the configurator on the setup tab, you can also click the activate bootloader button. And now because I have fixed my drivers, I see DFU and I'm ready to flash. Now flashing is done from the firmware flasher page. And before I can flash, I need to know what target to use. And the target is this selection right here in this menu. It's each flight controller has its own target. And if you flash the wrong target to the flight controller, well, probably you won't break anything, but definitely your flight controller won't work correctly. So which target do you select? The answer is here in the config dump that you saved out previously. If we look 
at this line where it says version and then after that it has this text. The key thing you want is this one here. Betaflight F4 is the name of your target. And almost always the target will be the same between the different versions of Betaflight when you go to flash it. So this one is Betaflight F4. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find Betaflight F4 here in the list. And then I'm going to select my Betaflight version is 410. That's the one. If there's a newer version at the time you're watching this, you go ahead and flash that. And then I'm going to hit load firmware and flash firmware. Now I said almost always the target is going to be the same when you go between different versions of Betaflight. The reason it's not all the time is very occasionally a flight controller will change its target name when it goes between two different Betaflight versions. So in Betaflight 4.0, it would have one target name. In Betaflight 4.1, it would have a different target name. I only mention this to you because I obsessively want to cover all the bases, but you probably will never run into this. If you're looking though, if you like, if you pick your target and you see that just there's no Betaflight 4.1 target for what you're looking for, then it might be under a different name. How do you find out what name that is? So you have to ask me and I'll try to help you figure it out. It probably won't happen. Okay, the, the flash is done. Now we are going to connect to the board and Betaflight 4.1 introduced a new feature called Unified Targets. And as a user, you don't really need to think about unified targets at all. Unified targets are really more tailored for helping manufacturers produce Betaflight flight controllers. But the way that unified targets do affect you is that when you look at the list, sometimes you'll see that there are two versions of a target, one saying legacy and one saying something else, like this Acon F4, then parentheses, ACO. The legacy one is a non-unified target and the ACO is the unified target and the takeaway, I have a whole video about this, what this is and why it is. I'll link it in the video description if you really want to go learn about that. But the takeaway for you now is that if you see a legacy and a non-legacy version of the target, you should pick the non-legacy version and flash it first. And then in, if it, since legacy targets are so new, occasionally like, oh, the OSD doesn't work or some feature doesn't work because it's got a bug in it. Then if you have any trouble with the non-legacy target, the unified target, then you flash the legacy target and see if it fixes it. But most of the time you're going to flash the unified target, which is the one that doesn't say legacy, and then you'll be fine. Now, after you flash a unified target, the next thing that happens when you connect is Betaflight is going to ask you, hey, do you want to apply custom defaults? And you just click, yeah, do it. Just do it or your flight controller won't work. Now that Betaflight 4.1 is on your flight controller, there's two more things we need to do. One of them is we need to re-upload the OSD font. Betaflight 4.1 added some new OSD features. And in order for those features to work correctly, it needs an updated character set in the OSD. If you don't do this, sometimes you'll see some weird glitchy characters in your OSD and it just won't work right. We need to plug in a battery and make sure your props are off. If you try to update the font without the battery plugged in, it will look like it worked, but it won't actually do anything. Then we're gonna hit the font manager and we're just gonna hit upload font. The last thing we need to do then is restore the configuration to the flight controller. Now, if you're doing this on your own, you can use the command line dump you saved out. And you're gonna to wanna to watch my video about which parts of the command line dump are safe to bring in to Betaflight 4.1 and which parts of the command line dump are not safe to bring in and will mess up your quadcopter. That video is linked down in the video description. On the other hand, you may have come to this video because you were watching one of my other videos where I was reviewing a quadcopter and I upgraded it to Betaflight 4.1. And in that case, I may have given you a link to a 4.1 config file that I have verified is safe for you to paste in. In that case, you're just gonna copy that text and here's what you're gonna do with it. Here in Betaflight, we're gonna go to the command line and we're gonna take our diff all output, which has been sanitized to be safe to import to Betaflight 4.1. We're gonna select all, we're gonna copy that text, and then here in the configurator, we're gonna click on the text field and right click and paste and hit enter. And that will restore your configuration. And when you do that, it should automatically save and the window will disappear. But if for some reason it doesn't, you may need to type the word save, S-A-V-E, in the text box and hit enter. And when you do that, 
you should find that as you reconnect, now you are on Betaflight 4.1, your configuration is completely restored, and you're ready to go. You're still going to want to verify. Like, do the basic checks. Like, take the quad and tip it front and back, left and right. Make sure that the 3D model moves correctly. Go to the receiver tab and make sure that your channel map is correct. Go to the modes tab and make sure that your arming mode and so forth is correct. Like, don't just, like, oh, everything must be fine, and then go to fly and have it flip out. But you should be good to go. Now that you're on Betaflight 4.1, there are a whole lot of new cool things that you're going to want to try out, like RPM filters and other things, and there's a whole playlist. I have a whole playlist of Betaflight 4.1 features, and it's linked in the video description. And so if you want to learn about that, check that playlist out. I sure would appreciate it. I hope you will enjoy learning all about how Betaflight 4.1 can make your quad fly amazing. But that's going to do it for this video. Get back to that other video you were watching where I was reviewing a quadcopter or get out there and fly your quad. <laughs> Happy flying, everybody.